Good morning, good morning. I'm in the posh car today. Still running late. Oh, oh. I'm gonna have to seriously reconsider the time I get up in the morning. This morning it was four o'clock. What is your solution? Well, uh, my solution is to try and get more people. But by the time I've checked all the Bitcoin news, the main news, anything new on YouTube <clears throat> and Reddit, and gone back to sleep again, it's uh, about uh, half past seven, which is too late. I need to get up earlier. I think I'll try three o'clock and then go back to sleep and wake up about uh, 25 to 8. No, that would be worse, wouldn't it? Oh, anyway. I've uh, asked uh, I've asked my wife to ring up her work and tell them I'm running late because I'm stuck behind a... Well, I'm going to get stuck behind a tractor. I haven't found one yet, but there will be one down here. So how are you anyway? All right? Yeah? Things going well? I don't know whether to talk about tax or fluoride today. I don't think I could do both subjects justice. Perhaps we'll do, let's do fluoride, we'll do tax another time. <laughs> Little tax joke there. No, we'll do, I mean, <clears throat> there was um, there was something in the news about fluoride the other day. And uh, I think fluoride itself is quite a good, is quite a good topic, you know, because there's, there's not a hundred percent consensus on it, even within the profession which uh, amazed me as a student. I mean, I thought, and obviously we were taught it was a no-brainer, you know, we were being trained to fight this horrible disease that caused uh, children to cry and for which there was a cure. You know, in, you know, if we only we added this stuff to the water. Now, I've got to say that my attitude to adding stuff to the water has actually sort of changed subtly not that I think that fluoride, adding fluoride to the water is a bad idea, but I thought it was unequivocally a good idea when I was young. But as I've got older, my view has moderated somewhat. And it's moderated basically because of the, the simple question, which is, you know, what if? Uh, you know, I, I, well, I actually, no, I think it's tied into sort of my anti-big government, anti-establishment, uh, attitude which I think has sort of developed more as I've sort of experienced big government and all the problems it causes and so my attitude now towards letting so sort of the powers that be the establishment muck about with the water supply is probably quite different you know it's completely modified so and you have to ask yourself what if you know Theresa May turned around tomorrow and said we've decided that uh, you know we're going to put this thing in the water supply uh, and it's going to be good for everyone well not for everyone but for some of us uh, and uh, the rest of you will just have to you know we'll just have to drink it anyway um, but it won't do you any good but it'll do us some good so we're going to put it in the water you know so and I don't know you know, my initial reaction to that would be, well, actually, I would be opposed to that. And and that is obviously one of the main arguments against fluoride, isn't it? From the people who wouldn't benefit from it. In other words, those those people who, who don't have teeth forming in their skulls, which is the majority of the population. So you're adding it to the water supply. You know, I know, but then, you know, some people would say, well, are you really adding it, you know? Are you really adding it or are you just balancing the water supply to match other naturally occurring water supplies? What should be in the water? You know, should it should it literally be just H2O and those things that are necessary for the safe delivery of H2O? Or do you open like a Pandora's box and say no, the water supply is an effective means for the delivery of X, Y or Z? Because the powers that be um, think it's a good idea so I don't now 
I, I think it's you know it's a bit like a smoking, isn't it, or uh, putting amalgam uh, mercury in people's teeth. We get away with it because we've done it historically, you know. Things it's like, and that's because as humans, we've got a great, very great tendency to think that we should be doing tomorrow pretty much what we're doing today. You know, we don't like to change anything too much. We don't like any sort of dislocation in uh, the continuity of life. And so we work on the basis that if it was okay, you know, if we did it yesterday, it's probably okay for us to do it today and tomorrow. So that's, I think, why fluoride uh, founded recently. Uh, you know, it was a great project, wasn't it, of the immediate past chief dental officer, Barry Cockcroft was very keen to sort of try and crown his, his list of failures by, uh, you know, changing the legislation so that uh, it, it could, you know, that local authorities could put fluoride in the water if they decided to. And they had the big Southampton case where they, they pushed very hard in Southampton to put fluoride in the water and failed. You know, they, they found that there were the status quo of no fluoride was almost impossible to shift and since then they've given up and local authorities basically have got more on most of the most of the government cuts this morning apparently have, are not in central government services they've been in local government so local government I think decided that it had other fish to fry other than fluoride uh, debate and so they've just and, and, and of course they're democratically accountable aren't they and I'd imagine there's a lot of councillors who are not keen to have something as controversial as fluoride on the agenda so the mere fact you know his, what was supposed to be his biggest triumph ended up being his biggest failure because the moving of the decision from central government to local government pretty well guaranteed that it's never going to happen that's it that was the that was the end of fluoride it was thought to be the the birth of fluoride and in fact it was the death knell for fluoride so i i started off as a unwilling fluoride opponent as a student uh, we were talking about uh, fluoride and um i you know and uh, <laughs> They said we're going to have a debate. We want to have a one side, one speaker pro fluoride, one speaker anti fluoride. And uh, everyone who wants to speak on the pro fluoride uh, side, step forward. And like 49 students stepped forward, <laughs> mindful of the fact that they were thought that they were going to get like a real brownie point for being, you know, in, in accordance with the views of the establishment, which had just been spelled out to us how brilliant fluoride was and all the studies, the Birmingham versus Manchester studies and all that. And um, and they were like, well, you know, we've got to have a debate. You have to have an opposition. So who's going to take the anti-fluoride? So of course Muggins here was big enough to say, yeah, right, okay, I don't mind. I don't care. Well, I, don't, I didn't care. I think I was too stupid to, re to think that there might be consequences <laughs> for being anti-fluoride. But I don't think there were. I mean, basically, they were. They just wanted a debate. They basically just wanted us to rehearse the answers and come to the right conclusion. And of course, the anti-fluoride vote won it in the end. <laughs> so, and I did it just by one very, very simple expedience, which was to. Um, I just went up to the blackboard at the front of the class at the opening opening part of my debate, and I said. And I wrote thalidomide on the board. That's all I did. I wrote th thalidomide, and it, you know, in the sort of 70s, thalidomide was still sort of fresh in people's minds. For those of you who don't know, it's a it was an anti-pregnancy sickness pill which uh, uh, caused birth. Uh, what's the word? Uh, people were born with um, truncated arms and legs, so uh, abnormalities, growth abnormalities in the fetus and um, it end, of course it ended in iod, fluoride ends in iod, lenamide ends in iod and that was about as far as the comparison goes you know so but my argument and it's now there's a name for this argument now it's called FUD, F-U-D, 
fear, uncertainty and doubt. And basically, I just said, you know, is fluoride safe? I mean, is it? I mean, is it? <laughs> I mean, is it really? Is it? I mean, can you be sure that it is? Can you guarantee me that it is? Are you 100% certain that it is? And they were like, <laughs> and these poor students, they didn't, you know, they didn't at the time know anything about the balance of probabilities or, uh, you know, the, the, the weight of the evidence. They were working on uh, the criminal standard of uh, beyond reasonable doubt. And all I had to do was raise a reasonable doubt. <laughs> and by spending my, my 20 minutes going, really, are you going to put this in the water supply and you can't guarantee that it's safe? <laughs> and so what happened, I won on, on uh, a majority of the votes in the room. Um, I won the motion that, uh, or rather the motion that fluoride, that fluoride is, uh, should be added to the water supply was defeated. It was a complete rehearsal of the Southampton debate, you know, like 30 years earlier. So, <clears throat> anyway, I wasn't proud of it. I was proud of the fact that I'd done what I set out to do, which is to win the debate, you know, win, win the argument. Because I figured you don't accept a job like that and then just, you know, where, where are we? We're not, not North Korea, you know? I mean, we'd, <laughs> it was Professor Picton who <laughs> was doing the debate. He's a lovely guy, not Kim Jong-un. So I didn't expect to be tied to the front of an anti-aircraft gun if I lost. Although I think that's what everybody else pretty well knew would happen. But it, it didn't, you know. But I think it, uh, sort of it went down in the history of UCH as the first time that the fluoride debate had been lost. <laughs> oh dear. Now, when I qualified in the, in the 1980s, I mean, we were massive on uh, fluoride drops, you know, oh, everybody had NDK fluoride drops and uh, uh, everybody uh, was, you know, we talked to the parents about the toothpaste and you had to have, below a certain age, it had to have half the fluoride and then below a certain age, it had to have a quarter of the fluoride and then if you were giving them fluoride drops, then the toothpaste had to have no fluoride and uh, it was, um, you know, people were acutely sort of aware of the fact that, they, you know, we used to say to them, look, you know, every, every mother or father of a child who came in said, look, I've got to tell you, the problem, there's a problem with the water around here, it doesn't have any fluoride in it. So if you want your, teeth, your children to have healthy teeth, you should give them fluoride drops. And I'm sure that, uh, you know, we helped uh, prevent a lot of decay and probably caused a lot of fluorosis at the same time. Um, nowadays, you know, the kids tend, well, the ones I see, they have healthier teeth. And okay, I mean, that is a highly biased sample, so I can't even really claim that. Um, I know that the, uh, the, the sort of substantially, the, um, the teeth of the children are not that, you know, still not brilliant, which is a shocking indictment, really, of the profession after all this time. I mean, this is what I say to people, that you, you've got dental disease is really really simple you know I mean what what goes wrong with teeth I mean if you don't brush your teeth as well as you think you do they, they shrink and then that's really like a disease starting in, in your 20s um, and then the problem with uh, the under 20s is that everyone eats more sugar than they think and some people in their 60s and 50s eat more sugar than they think but mainly that the sugar thing is a, is a disease of teenagers and um, you know, we couldn't have a simpler health problem than this. Two diseases, both of which we know the cause. <laughs> and yet everyone's still getting, you know, <laughs> there should be far fewer dentists in the world than there are. But, if, but, but the fact that there are twice as many dentists now as there were when I qualified, <coughs> <coughs> excuse me, despite the fact that the, it's, the, the disease hasn't changed, it's the same disease, it's still only got two causes and we know the cause of both of them still and have done since I qualified, it, it's a shocking indictment. Oh this car, beep beep beep, on off, on off, on off. You can't understand why. It turns itself off for five seconds, right? If you put your foot on the brake and keep your foot on the brake, the car turns itself off. And then 
it starts itself again, right? Now, what does it use to start? It uses electrical energy, doesn't it? It draws it from the battery to turn the engine over. And what charges the battery up? The alternator, driven by the motor, which is powered by petrol. So you're not telling me that, that stopping the car for five seconds saves petrol? It can't do, can it? I mean, the amount of petrol it requires to turn the alternator to charge the battery up to start the engine after it's stopped the engine to save two pence worth of petrol has got to be more. Well, I suppose, oh no, if you're stuck in a traffic jam, then fine, fair enough. Yeah, so that's fluoride for you. So don't expect anything, you know, to happen on the fluoride front. And it's a shame, because honestly, I do believe that uh, fluoride is uh, safe and effective. I got involved in a debate with someone once, though. Really, uh, <clears throat> I must have been involved with somebody who was who'd spent their life uh, drawing together all of the research. Uh, alleging that fluoride is um, an industrial waste byproduct of uh, mining and, and and a poison, because I and I think I posted something online, and then he emailed me uh, this paper saying that fluoride was a poison, and then I emailed it back and say my usual say, well, if it's good enough for the World Health Organization and the FDI, it's good enough for me. That's what I say. All I say is, look. Don't, you don't have to convince me, convince the World Health Organization. As soon as the World Health Organization says it's an industrial waste byproduct poison, then I'll stop, uh, then I'll go with their, um, their version and, we'll, and I'll stop recommending it. But he sent me a ton of stuff, I must say, I was impressed. I mean, paper after paper after paper showing that fluoride in the doses that, uh, that, uh, you know, was it were recommended for putting in the water supply were implicated in everything, absolutely everything, from uh, early uh, mortality to ingrown toenails. Everything, every disease you can imagine under the sun. Even to the point where I seriously considered that he was literally just photoshopping these papers together. And and I'm not talking about. And I don't sort of take any notice of anything that's not you know, that doesn't claim to be scientifically peer-reviewed, randomised, controlled, double-blind. So, and these things appeared to me, and I'm not just saying that they look like, you know, something that I might have flicked past in the BDJ, but they did, to a scientist, to me, they appeared to be reasonably well-written, well-argued, and, and but all out of magazines that I hadn't really heard of, and at the time didn't have a massive amount, didn't have the facilities to check it all. And I must say they made a, a convincing case to anyone, certainly certainly, to me they looked, I wouldn't say wholly convincing, that I was wholly convinced by them because I was still, I still, you know, the provenance was a bit iffy and th this is not, you know, there was just, there was, there, was a, there was an absolute avalanche of this stuff and I couldn't understand where it was all coming from. But, um, you know, certainly to someone who's not, scientifically trained or someone with some some uh, level of scientific training would, would I think would have been persuasive you know it's only persuasive enough to put some FUD it's the car it doesn't, like, it doesn't like my driving it doesn't if the car in front is stopping faster than you it beeps if you get too close to the car in front it beeps It's, it's the shape of things to come, this car. This is, we're on the cusp here of cars. This is just itching to take control off of me, this car. It's just, every, that beep, that stern beep there was the car saying, you're not concentrating. I am concentrating more than you. Just get your act together. That's what it was saying. And it's itching to drive. It's 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 on the cusp of becoming sentient, and to be honest with you, I, I I'm not sure that I'm going to be too bothered when it does, because I could quite happily, like that bloke in the um, Tesla, sit here and get decapitated while the car did all the driving. Yeah. So, uh, but um, and also there's a lot of opposition to fluoride in the House of Lords, 
Or at least there was. There's, there's one old twit, Lord something or other, who, who consistently, every week, asked a question about uh, whether the government was going to ban fluoride because it was poisonous, or did the government was the government aware of this study that showed that poor, uh, fluoride was poisonous, etc., etc. And he made it his thing. It was his thing, you know. Everybody needs a thing, and that was his thing. Fluoride. So there's no enthusiasm from the government, neither from the commons, or the lords, or the local authorities. Which is a shame. And I suppose you can still get fluoride drops, but they're so difficult. They honestly, I mean, I'm supposed to take vitamin tablets every day, and I don't. I, I can't build them into my routine to the extent that you know, I manage to take them every day. And you could argue that like having a few fluoride drops is probably better than none. And certainly a few is better than too many. But, um, you know, who's going to, who's going to take a, who's going to effectively do something that's for, for 12 years, you know, which is what you're asking them to, or at least six years or something. Who takes a course of treatment for six years? very difficult right here we are it's gonna be hot 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 we've got a 23 forecast for today and then 26 for the rest of the week so enjoy it while it lasts stop beeping see you tomorrow bye